Hello everybody, this is Debbie from Stamps and Stuff and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based out of beautiful Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And Lake Havasu is the American home of the London Bridge and uh, Robert McCulloch bought it from, brought it from England and put it in dry land and then they dredged out underneath it and brought the lake in under. So that's how we got the London Bridge here in Lake Havasu. But really is a beautiful city and it's nice and sunny. It's been in the high 80s. I think it was 88 yesterday. Uh, it's just beautiful out there now. So anyway, nice weather here. Hope it is where you are too. I hope uh, some, I know some of you have got lots of snow and everything. I hope you're bundled up and have a roaring fire there. Okay, now today we are going to be working with the Sweet Strawberry um, set. And it has this set. It has a lot of nice sentiments. And then it has... The punch with it and so that's what's included in the bundle and if you're interested in that please visit my online store it's stampsandstuff.org you can hit shop and it'll take you directly to my online store and also if you like these videos and want to continue seeing them please like share comment subscribe and share is number one that's what helps me to grow my channel the most so i really appreciate that and each four of those actions get you in for a drawing and by the way we had a drawing um on last thursday and it went to Karen Howard, and she had her choice of the uh, Oso Ombre designer paper, um, the Heal Your Heart, Approaching Perfection, or the new paper pumpkin that has not arrived yet, the new one coming in this next month. And she chose the, the paper pumpkin. So as soon as that arrives to me, I will ship it out to her. I've been in contact with her. So that will be ready to go. But also with these drawings, they will be announced on the website. So if you're on the website and you're signed to get the, the posts as they come, I post these videos and the PDFs and the tutorials and everything. If you're getting those posts, you will get notification of who the winners are. And uh, it's my intention to have more and more drawings as the channel builds. So um, anyway... I think that's it for housekeeping right now. We can get started here, but this is a great set. It also coordinated with the celebration set. And um, I did these cards with it. And this today we're gonna be working on, this is a stationary set. So we have the belly band here and we have three cards and envelopes in there. And uh, these are fun fold cards, so they are, you know, a little bigger. Otherwise, you probably could get an extra card in there. But for class, we did them with this, and then we um, did this one, and had the envelope, and then we did this one with the uh, blueberries, and that's another fun fold. So that we did, um, was it last week or week before, I think we did that, before just before celebration ended. So anyway, this is available in the catalog. And um, these are using the uh, paper that we were able to get during celebration. But if you don't have any of it, you can use anything, Just I just used the colors that kind of went with the strawberries. And um, so your granny apple green and uh, your real red and all of that, those colors go really good. You could put 
any background stamp. Um, you could use the buffalo check, would be really pretty with the red and white or green and white. And just a myriad of a nice background stamp that you can put in and use instead of that designer paper. So, okay. We are going to get started here. So I think we will do, I will show you these cards and they are in the acetate boxes and these are available in my online store also. So we will do, we'll do that one last, but, um, this, this is one of them, and this one is a fun fold card. This one I have in here because it's a bit interactive. Okay, so we have this, and watch. So what you do with this before you put it in the envelope is this is twine here. And what you'll want to do is you will want to wind it up and then place it in your envelope so that when they open it, it spins. Okay. We will get started with our first card here. this one and I will have all the dimensions and the tutorial will be posted on the website and the website will go live after this video airs then I will go and I'll do my work on the website post get it up so it will have this video and it will have the PDF tutorial and with all the measurements and instructions and everything so that will be up and it will be up later this afternoon so anyway the acetate boxes come in a bag like this and they come i think that yes there's 10 of them in a bag and you can get them in the catalog and also these envelopes are good i call them envelope they're envelope boxes they're acetate and and you can actually mail in them because this one has a belly band i wouldn't put that through the mail but uh, you couldn't but um if you had uh, say a card that has a lot of dimension to it you can mail them in these boxes and um where is my sample i don't have it right here but you just put a card in the back with your with the address of the recipient and your address and what I do is I tape it on both sides with packing tape and as long as you do that this box is is really sturdy and I've used them ye for years uh, mailing cards okay this first one here also to remind you when you learn a new fold I make a template and I save the packages that my dies come in and I cut the top off and I label this and I have them all filed in a box. And of course I have a, <laughs> I have a file this long of templates that I still have to get in, filed in these. But I thought this was a really good um, way to save these and sometimes you're saving them in two or three different stages so quite a bit will fit in here so that that works out really good for me so that's a good organizational tip okay now i have this sheet here let me tell you what the measurement is on this now all the other measurements and everything will be on the pdf tutorial this one will this is nine by eight and a half and it is scored and i also on the back of these i write all my instructions it's scored at three and it's scored at six then we're going to rotate it and cut it at five and a half and so it really is easy easy to set up so you're going to score on the long side and you're going to cut on the short side at five and a half. Uh, 
Okay, and that's going to give us our two pieces. Oh, wait a minute. We're not going with this card. We're going with this one first. Okay. It's going to give us our two pieces here. So we will fold this one back and this one forward. Get myself organized here. And when I do a fun fold... I use, make sure that I use heavy, the heaviest paper I can, which is the, the basic white heavy. Because fun folds and interactive cards tend to get um, messed with open and closed more. And so it helps them to retain their shape. Okay. So this is going to be how this is going to go. So what I'm going to do here I should have got some more glue. I think these are just about out. I've got several of them I need to uh, they get kind of low and I pile them over here, so I've got a bunch of them that I need to uh, make sure that I get used up. Also, when you can't get any more out of this nozzle and you've poked at it and tried and tried, open this side because I'll guarantee you there will be a bunch that's right in there. And otherwise that ends up getting thrown away. So just open up this side and use this tip. This is a tip most of us don't use very often. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the center. So this is a very, very simple card. Okay. And this one. We will put on the small panel. Okay. I do want to say I appreciate everybody's comments and notes and texts and emails. It really is super. Like I've said before, it makes my day. And I answer every one that I see. So if you've got one that's been past a day and you haven't got an answer, I've missed it because I read every, every one. Okay. Now then, I'm going to take, get my real red dauber here. And I want to do my edges. This really is such a pretty set, and there is just so many things that you can do with it. And uh, also, I saw one where they made a little candy box, and they used, they were a flat, they were a heart candy, and they were wrapped, but they, she took this here, and put it right on top of that wrapped candy and it looked it was a heart but it looked just like a strawberry and then filled them it was just really a cool idea 
I wish I would have saved a picture of that. And I've got to get better at my program to where I can load in extra things and I can I can hit that. But I'm I'm new to this switcher studio stuff and um whoop. sorry about that that's messed up i should have got a clean sheet out okay now on this one i am going to take our foliage with the tuxedo black memento and let me see Okay, there's only one on this one. So let me see. I think I am going to go just kind of back. Let me go this way. A lot of times I like to go right, put the stamp this way, and tap it and just make sure. Straight down, straight up. And then we are going to take the Just For You. Every once in a while my nail gets in the ink in it. Straight down, one, two, three, straight up. Whoop, I should have done that on the Stamparatus, really. I did not get that inked up well enough. And this is how I fix it. And I don't edit videos. Um, I want you to see when there's a mistake, how to correct it. Okay, I have a black Prisma pencil. And what I am going to do, the Prisma pencils, when you're trying to clean up where you didn't get it inked, they are the best to use so what i'm going to do is i am just going to kind of touch this up right there and that's how i correct it and no one will ever know unless you tell them okay so we have that one and then this one is going to be our happy birthday. And this one also is in the tuxedo black. Okay, right in the middle here. Straight down, one, two, three, straight up. I don't know why that other one didn't do it. I just must not have got it inked up well enough okay now what also I love is the simply chamois there you go and they are clean and ready to go for the next one I don't use baby wipes on my or anything with alcohol on my stamps Okay. Now then, I am going to take these and mount them on their designer paper, which is right here. And I'm kind of looking to make sure I've got that pretty even. Whoop, 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 whoop. This one goes over here. That's why I like the glue. Double stick tape does that same thing. It kind of stays a little bit tacky so that you can remove it. I always used to use double stick tape for that reason. Uh, I don't care for one that when you put it down, it's down permanent right that instant because so many times, and especially, you know, when I'm on video, I can't get the the right angle. Normally when I'm stamping, I, st I stand up and I look down on it so that I'm sure that I get it straight. Okay, now this is going to mount... 
right here. So I am going to put glue on this about a little over half, two thirds. And this one, I am going to leave this clean and this one about half, little more than half, not much more than half. And then I am going to kind of hold this down for a second. And there you have your, your double fold. And then what I'm going to do here Okay, is I am going to take my granny apple green. Do I have them right here? Yes, I do. And I am going to get these leaves colored. And if you'll notice, I am leaving white. White is not your enemy. I don't... I don't always go right to the edge. It it really adds some uh, interest to your and it it you know it looks like it's kind of sun kissed too you know the sun may be shining on that. Okay, now I'm going to take the darker and I'm going to go in just not quite as far out so that there will be the light on the edge. So as you can see, I am not fretting over exactness here. It just comes together. And I don't go all the way out, but I do go to the edge and I kind of go out, flare it out, and then bring it up to a little bit of a point there. See? Now, flowers for strawberries, because I have them right out my studio door. I have two beds of strawberries. The flowers are white. And then we put little yellow centers on them. They don't look yellow for very long because this center is where the strawberry comes. Okay. Now then I am going to take and I'm going to round these off just a tad okay and put this here this one i am going to put the dimensional over a little bit more on the side i hope that one isn't going to interfere but we will see here so that i can put that right like this and for a little added dimension I am going to pop up one of at least one of these flowers here okay and then also I'm going to put a strawberry on the inside so there you go there is your double trifold and in the interest of no naked envelopes I have stamped two strawberries here with the just for you okay so that is Card number one. And.
And this is card number two. Get those pieces out. Now this is a thank you. The first one we have done two birthdays and a thank you. We will do them. Okay, this is my inside. Let me get this on the front here. And this really makes a nice gift. Be great for, you know, birthday, but at Christmas time, these types of uh, cards are really good. Okay, what I want to do here is I want to stamp this one. So I'm going to get my tuxedo black and And another thing, a lot of times, like I said, I will hold it this way and tap it in. If you're getting ink all over this block, you are either stamping too hard on it. It's just tap, tap, tap. That's what we try to say in class. Tap, tap, tap. And you can look and make sure that the ink is on there. But if you're getting it on the side, a lot of times you might be coming from an angle and getting it. So try and go straight down on it and that'll save, save your mess. It will save your card too. Okay, now this one, I am gonna go up in this corner, straight down, one, two, three, straight up. Then I am going to do this again. A lot of times with these pads, it's harder not to get it here because, especially when you're using the Stamparatus, because the pad is so big and it's hard to see your your angle that you're hitting that, that stamp with. That's where your little stamping spots are really good when you're using the Stamparatus because it's a smaller stamp and you've got more control. Okay, now then we're going to put this right in, right about there, straight down, one, two, three, straight up. Okay. Let that dry for just a second here. And I will take my bow. I've had several ask me about the, the bow jigs that my husband makes. And if you go to the website and hit the contact me button and let me know, um, they're, they're $10 and uh, I can bill you through PayPal. But I've had several requests for them. Handy dandy little object. Okay. Now with this, I'm going to do... Let's see, this is the dark. I want to do the light first. I, I'm one that goes with my light first. Again, I'm going to go up through these leaves with the light. And I'm not going to the, to, to the edge. And you want to go color on the side of the tip, too. Don't color straight down. You tweak your tips. Okay. 
now the dark I'm going to go and you can tell the artist will generally give you a hint I follow kind of those veins out but I don't follow them all the way covering that light but I do like to have that light down there because it's just like when you know we all started with Copics and we all took the Copic classes and everything it's you want to get a base coat that kind of wets that paper it's almost like you know with watercolor you have to wet that paper first so that the colors will blend but I know there's some that that have it dry in between each now for me that makes it very difficult to blend although this on this object I'm not doing really any blending I'm just doing one the two colors there okay and then I need some yellow here on my flower centers that's where the strawberry comes I got loads of strawberries coming on my plants okay now I guess I can do the thank you here too I was trying to decide whether to do it now or okay congrats do I not have the thank you okay and a good way to pick up your stamp especially when they're kind of small and straight lay it down and pick it up like this if you tend to put it on when it when you want it to be straight it sometimes it gets a little bit of a bow in it okay I am going to stamp this with my real red I hope that's straight I can't get I can't get totally over it okay then I'm gonna put it on its panel here and I'll put this one on the panel Okay, I'll put these up on dimensionals. Normally, I'm a person, and one of my mottos in class is when in doubt, pop it out. But lately, I have been doing things that I just glue them straight down rather than pop them up. So, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy that's what you do okay now then I'm going to put this right there so what I'm watching for is these this all right here to be about the same Okay, now this I am putting straight down. I'm not going to pop it all the way up. And I will take this. I want to pop 
pull these down. Whoop. Get that off my finger. Wait a minute. I want to put my strawberries on first here. this right about here. And this one right about here up just a little bit. And then I want to put my bow kind of right in here. And then kind of fluff it up. I like fluffy bows. I'm going to take and clip this one just a tad. There we go. Put that over there. Then we are going to work on the inside. You will always want to carry your theme from the outside to the inside. Can't get this. There we go. This should be right at four. Did I cut? Okay. This green one, I think, was just a tad shy of oh no that's good we are good to go I was always thinking of that measure twice cut once that I didn't do but it worked out well let me get this side up here just just see how I pulled that off and I can manipulate that that is the beauty of this glue is it just remains pliable for that period of time. Let me see, did I do this? How did I do that? Oh, okay, I did that on the other side. Okay. Okay, this is... And I need that one, too. No matter how ready you think you are, you're not. <laughs> That's just the way it is. The reason I stamp this on a mat is these stamps are photopolymer. They do not have the foam in between them. There is a padding that's on the cling and the and the others that um, helps so you get a good image straight down, straight up. Okay, so that's why I stamp with that pad when I'm using photopolymer. And always, 
and especially with a red pad, I get it away because no matter what I do, I always end up with red on me. Okay. Now I think I put little flowers in there too, didn't I? Yep. Okay, let me put this on my... I have my silicone pad right here that I put my glue on. There we go. Now I'm going to just for difference here, I'm going to pop these two up. And I always use old scissors for doing this when I'm snipping across these because there's glue on the side and otherwise it kind of messes up your blades so I have a dedicated pair of scissors that I when I'm going to cut across anything that's going to have glue on it okay so there is this one so we have our front and we have the theme carried into the inside and then through to the envelope. I'm a no naked envelope person. So that is card number two. So let's do this little interactive one here. And always remember when you go to put this card in the envelope, you want to make sure that you wind this taut. Wind it as far as it'll go so that when they pull it out of the envelope and they pick it up it starts to spin okay so we will put this over here and we will go here Now, the most difficult part of this one, and it's not difficult at all, is die cutting your circles on this. Oh, I got the wrong. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to use this as an example, even though it's, it's the wrong um, fold. This is a uh, portrait rather than the uh, landscape or the half sheet like this okay what you're going to do when you go to cut this one this panel in here is slightly smaller if you glued it on the back and it's what holds these the uh, twine in there if you were to have it identical size it would tend to get all mucked up here as the card was opened and closed. So you want, this is actually a quarter inch smaller than the outside. So what you're going to do when you die cut that is you can put it on the front like this. And then you can use, this is removable tape. You can do this, and it will not harm your paper. You can use removable tape. You can use the little post-it notes. These are really good. I like these because you can use them over and over and over. These you can use over, but eventually the die starts cutting it. This, the die does not cut, so it stays for um, quite a while. So anyway, you put the removable tape on. And then you're going to put your circle. And I have used the um, st 
stitched shapes and it's the largest circle here. And then you take this and run it through so that you're cutting both layers. Then you can pull it off and you have this. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, you can do this with your seal plus. I'm going to do it this time with the um, tear and tape, but you need a tape that is strong. Okay, now then, where is my, here it is. Okay, now what we're going to do here is I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to put this across here and I'm going to put it over across that tape. And then I am going to put another piece across the top and burnish that in really good. The main thing is you want this twine most important part of this card you want this twine you want it straight for one thing but then you want it secured really well so that it is not going to come off So I am putting the tear and tape here over the top here and I just want it secured in really well. Okay. Now then I'm going to Remove this. Okay. And then let me make sure that I've got the right one. Okay, because if I flipped it, it wouldn't line up exactly right. So I just want to make sure that I have got it. So I'm going to put the glue on the right side. Okay. Now I'm going to put that, I'm going to line up. my circle. Okay, now then, what we're going to do is I am going to lay these. These have the stitching around the edges, and as you can see, there's a right side and a wrong side, so you want the wrong sides is what you want to stamp on them. 
Okay, now then I'm going to move this over here. Get my memento. And I'm going to straight down, one, two, three, straight up. Straight down. I have to get my finger in between there, my fingernail, pop that off the stamp, and then I am going to do this again. Make sure that I am still, I've got a find some time to take the tutorial on getting the comments up and all of that so that I can interact with you that's my intention to do I need a iPad or something so I can get the comments up to see them so we're trying to decipher which one to get. I think we're going to get the iPad Pro. It's got a terabyte of storage on it. And since storage seemed to be my problem here lately, I'm opting for lots of storage. Okay, now I'll take the Granny Apple Green, the dark, and I am just going to... Go kind of up the centers. Again, I'm just laying down the color there, not worried about exactness there we go okay now then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the glue and I'm going to put this kind of right in the center there right there so that won't pop up and then I'm going to put just a little more glue not not too much I don't want it to just slide all over everywhere but I do want them to get a good amount that I can put that okay so mounted those up then what I need here where's the other My other leaf here, I'm going to go ahead and do it without so that, because I don't want this video to get too terribly long. Put this right here. And I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm going to flip this on the other side here. I didn't bring my water with me.
<laughs> in my studio. Over on this side, I have counter all along here, along that wall, and then there's a little area where we have a couple chairs and uh, our little chihuahua. That's where he he kind of always comes in here and lays. And then on this table here, right on this side, I don't know if you can see that. In the cent in the center of the table. There's a, a box that's a little bit bigger than a shoe box, and our cat's in there. And when we uh, have class, and especially when Dora gets here, the cat always comes to the table and kind of sits at her spot. And uh, he's very cognizant of her being here. She's a cat lover. And... Um, she hurt herself not too long ago, so she wasn't at class for a while. And the cat, you know, this cat has been, I've been teaching class at home probably, I don't know, six years or whatever. And the cat's always in the box. But when she was gone, he didn't come, he didn't come to class. And I know when I started having classes at home, I figured I'd have the animals away and gone. Everybody said, no, no. So the dog sits in the chair <laughs> and the cat's on the table and that cat lays there and it's uh he has to be in class and he'll watch for when people start getting here, you know, on uh, Thursday morning and then he he comes to class. It's it's the ritual like at night when we go to bed, right? We're in the in the den watching TV or whatever and uh, the cat will come to the door at bedtime and meow like he's summoning the troops and then we get up to go to bed and he walks in front and the chihuahua follows him and then we go and that cat will make sure that he stays just a couple feet ahead of Bentley because you know He's got to be the lead person here, and it it just is a scream, I'll tell you. What will we do without our little... Well, they're our kids, you know, when our kids are gone. And animals, you know, they love you. They love you no matter what. It's unconditional love. We've always had pets, horses, chickens, hamsters. <laughs> we were foster parents for about 25 years and we had one little girl and they called Miss a Debbie. This one's got a little hamster and she wants to bring it. Will you please accept the hamster? <laughs> and I said, okay. So we get the hamster and we get the cage and we get all the setup and everything. And She figured she'd take it to bed with her. So the hamster ended up hunting it through the house and he burrowed up through my brand new couch underneath. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh memories had lots of lots of funny memories i tell you okay all righty now i am going to do our inside here and if you'll notice this one i'm doing it i changed up the color here on the bottom i brought a little more of the green in so, you know, you can do whatever floats your boat. The object is to make it your project and um, do whatever you want to do. Okay. We're going to put the just for you here. And put this one on, get this card done, and then we'll show you how to do the belly band.
Well, there was more glue. I never thought I would make it through all of these cards. Now, how much? Oh, okay. We have just been, just been one hour. But we'll have three cards and a box. Okay. Then I'll show you how to set this when you put it in the envelope so that it will spin. Okay. Okay, this one here. I'm going to put this one. I don't have the leaf, and I don't want you to have to wait, so I'm putting two there rather than having the leaf like I did this. And that's fine. Okay, then we have our envelope here done. Now to set this card, what you want to do is you want to wrap this so that, and you'll feel it get taut. So you want to put it that way so that when you let go, see it's going to spin. So now we're going to wind it again. And like I say, you want to make sure that you get these this this um, twine sealed in there good. Okay. There we go. And then I get that one that way so that it is um, ready to spin. Okay, now we're going to do our um our box get my box here and this is very easy these boxes come like this and you just Pop them up and bend them back the other way. They are all scored and ready to go. And then I'm closing both sides. Here. Okay, now then. I don't score it ahead of time. Okay, but I am going to, um, let me see, I want, let me do this like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'll get this set this side here and then this side here. And what I do is I cross it in the front. So I have the seam in the front and the reason I do that, a lot of people do it on the back because they think, well, it's in the back, but this, because I'm having this panel and the strawberries and everything go over it, that covers that. So when somebody looks on the back of your belly band, they're going to see just a nice, a nice piece and not a seam. Okay. So, 
put this on here. And because this is for a birthday gift, I will get the congrats. Oh, here's the happy birthday. Get my real red here. Tap, 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 tap. Sound like a woodpecker? Okay, now I'm going to go over to the right. And I'm going to go just... Just a hair down from center. I hope that's straight. Like I say, I can't get in here to... It's a little off, but it's okay. All righty. Oh, man, let me cut the rest of these. Get this out of here. Open ink pads are a recipe for disaster when you get a lot of stuff. I try and keep things picked up so I <clears throat> don't get things all on top of each other so that that happens. Okay, now I will take, and also I want to talk to you a little bit about how you stamp your strawberries and your <clears throat> leaves and all that so that they punch out properly rather than... Um, Okay, get this. Because if you don't, if you don't set it up right, you will tend to ruin the next image before you can. There we go. Oh, did I get some glue down there? Yeah, I did. That's one thing. Now, I'm going to show you how to fix this. Whenever you get glue, I got glue past where the, the, uh, they came together. This is what you do. <clears throat> I have a little bit of baby powder here. You can use cornstarch, anything like that. Now see, right along that edge is where there's glue, and I want this belly band to be able to slide on and off. So what I'm doing is I'm powdering where that glue went over. Let me... Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now your belly band goes up and down. 
So like I say, I don't like to edit mistakes out because then you don't learn how to fix them. And the main thing is learning how to fix mistakes because we all make them. Okay. Now I'm going to take my bow. There we go. <clears throat> Trim the edges there. And there we have it. And the bow is on and the belly band slides as opposed to being stuck there. Okay, so here we have, we have this card here. We have this one, the interactive card over here and then we have this and so there's your card set and it really is does make a nice gift now when you set these images up to stamp make sure especially with this one, that you stamp images. Well, this one, what you want to do is you want to give it space. See here? See the difference between the two? Now watch. These are put close, which we tend to do with paper because we want to get the, you know, the biggest bang for the buck with our paper. But when you go to put this in, and I will stop that right there. Okay. Now, when I punch that, what's going to happen to this next image? See? It got tweaked. So, when you set yours up and you're on a punch, especially a builder punch type where there's lots of images in there, You want to give yourself room, see? So this flower's got plenty of room to punch out. That one's fine, and now that one will be fine. These, it doesn't matter as much. You want to bring them in from the side and punch, and then bring, just keep bringing it in. And see, they're okay. Same with the leaf. You're going to stamp it. You want to make sure you get your orientation right. See that one? But you want do want to make sure it would be probably better if you left a little more space because that's kind of getting close to there, but it's okay. And then this one, you want it facing that way and then slide it in from there. So you want to take a little bit of time and get to know your builder punch. Otherwise, you're going to be frustrated because you've got all these beautifully colored images. Some of them you might have colored them with pencils or watercolored or whatever. And then you tweak them because they don't punch out right. So that's a little tip with that. Okay, so we are about done. Anything that you need, check my online store at stampsandstuff.org. Any uh, order using this host code that's um, $35 before tax and shipping gets a free gift. All orders get a hand stamp card from me, but if you use the host code, you get that free gift. If your order is over $150, do not use the host code because you qualify for Stampin' Rewards directly from Stampin' Up. Now, when the order comes through and I see it go through, I will go ahead and send you your gift, even though you didn't use the host code, because I know that uh, I want you to make sure that you get Stampin' Up's reward. And if you use the host code, you won't. 
So you need to uh, be your own host, so to speak, on your over $150 order and get your Stampin' Rewards. And I want you to have them. And you will still get my gift and my card. So anyway, I appreciate that. And like I say, I will... I have something to do now, but I will be back this afternoon to get my website, all that work done, um, get my um, post live, and the video will be on there, the PDF, the tutorial, everything that you need to recreate this. And you can use different sets, uh, different papers. You can, you know, if you're using the, if you're brand new and you got these, then uh, this paper, and I think Real Red is in here too, isn't it? Because these are the brights. So your, you know, your Real Red's in there. You can use those or any of your, uh, the current. Those are the new ones, the new designs coming out in the new catalog. And if you just signed up, you got those ahead of time. Now, if you're like everybody else and you have the rest of your DSP, they will, if you, that you're, it's the brights, I believe. Yeah, in the brights will be the two colors you'll need for this. So anyway, if you have any comments, please let me know what you like to see, what you don't like to see, um, anything else, because I am here to uh, try and help, help you have a great experience. So anyway, have a great rest of the day. This is Tuesday. I will be back on Friday. Last Friday, we weren't here. We put in a new counter, and I'm eventually going to have uh, four counter units. That's a four-foot unit. I'll have four of them across that span back there. So we're in the process of doing that. And, of course, when you, when you do anything in a craft room, it creates a mess because you're moving stuff and everything. So anyway, but I will be back on Friday. I will see you then. And thank you so much for your support. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I read every comment. And like I say, if you're not getting a comment, somehow it might have gotten a miss uh, because I do. I'm, I'm up, you know, five in the morning. And that's generally what I do at that time is uh, answer all my comments. So anyway, I appreciate you guys and have a great rest of the day. And uh, I'll see you again. Thank you.